Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, I am going to be grading every single NBA team based off of the first week of the 2019-2020 NBA season. So in the comment section below, guys, give me your favorite team's grade that you would give them based off of the first season. Or I'm sorry, the first week. And let me know why. It's just because, you know, obviously I'm not being able to watch every single nba game because a lot of these teams have played like you know three games already so that's just a ton of basketball to be watching uh but i've been trying to follow up for the most part so yeah we're gonna go over player stats team records kind of like who certain teams uh lost to or maybe they beat and just kind of base it off of the uh, kind of like the expectations we had going into the nba season so if you want this to be like a weekly thing maybe i'll do it like once a week or once a month uh drop a like on this video guys just so i know the interest is there and yeah let's just have fun with this so we are going to start off with the philadelphia 76ers currently a 3-0 on the nba season uh they just pulled one off against the atlanta hawks uh the detroit pistons they were able to beat without Joel and beat so that was a nice win and of course they beat the boston celtics uh player stats on the season so far here guys um, yeah, Joel Embiid in the two games he's played, playing like an MVP in my opinion, you know, Tobias Harris doing his thing out there, Ben Simmons is being as good as Ben Simmons can be, Al Horford seems like a nice fit already, uh, even like the bench, you know, like, like, like Mike Scott, Shake Milton, you know, guys like that, man, I was expecting the, uh, 76ers bench to really do bad out there, but they have actually kind of picked up some of the three-point shooting slack, because if you look over here, if you guys can see this, man, uh, the three-point percentage of, like, the starting five, it's not been good. That's definitely something they are going to have to fix. But I would say as of right now, I would say the Philadelphia 76ers, um, probably a basketball. Just being able to get that one without Joel Embiid and, you know, the 3-0 on the season, man. So, yeah, you definitely got to give props for props for dude. Uh, next up, we have the Milwaukee Bucks, 2-1. So, of course, they had a five-point loss to the uh, Miami Heat. So, let's look at the stats on the season so far. We got Giannis. You know, playing, picking up right where he left off, uh, just playing great basketball. You know, Eric Bledsoe, I'm just kind of ready for them to probably trade Eric Bledsoe away. George Hill's been nice. You know, Kyle Corver, nine points per game. Uh, Bench has been doing some nice things out there, guys. Uh, two and one, you know, it's like this is the team that a lot of people have at, like, the top of the Eastern Conference. So, I think after losing to the Miami Heat like that, you know... It's not really a thing to be concerned about, but it's just like, okay, I don't, I guess I can't really give them the A, you know, for the first week. I would say they are more so along the lines of a B, I would say, uh, after the first week. And that's just really because of that one loss to the Miami Heat, but Miami's playing great basketball themselves. So, yeah. All right, next up, we got the Chicago Bulls. One and three on the season. So, Zach Levine averaged 21 points. Um, I will say there's certain aspects of his game, especially like in the closing, that I haven't really been too impressed with. Um, as far as like the defense of this team, especially in the front court, it's not going to so well out there. A lot of that is just because, you know, Wendell Carter did miss a lot of time uh, his rookie season. So he still has to figure things out. And it is really a young team. Like, yes, they got some veteran talent in like Thaddeus Young and Tomas Anaronsky. Um, I do think that, I don't know, for, some, for whatever reason, man, the uh, stats are not updated for the rookies. Um, I do think Kobe White, man, he's been playing like a rookie of the year candidate in this early on, you know, first season or first week of the league. So uh, be a one and three, though. I know that Chicago Bulls fans probably had a bit of higher expectations. Uh, I would probably honestly have to give them a D right now, guys. Probably a D for the Chicago Bulls. I don't think they're quite failing out there. Uh, if you look at some of the wins, it's like they lost to the Charlotte Hornets by one point. That's not great. Uh, beat to the Memphis Grizzlies. Lost to a good Toronto Raptors team and then lost to the New York Knicks. So, you know, those are definitely some of the games that they should have won. I would say they should have beat the Knicks and the Hornets. So, they realistically should be 3-1. and one. But I think a D probably uh, seems about right. Next up, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers. They are one and two on the season. Uh, their only win against the Indiana Pacers. Uh, looking at their player stats real quick here, man. Tristan Thompson actually playing some really good basketball. Um, Colin Sexton, 17 points. We all know we can score the basketball. I just wish he would do a bit more like assist-wise. Like getting other players involved. Kevin Love. It uh, just looks like he's trying out for another NBA team at this point. Uh, you know, being one and two, I mean. <sighs> They haven't really done anything to, like, impress me all that much. Like, like it's, they're just kind of, like, whatever. So, I'm kind of between, like, a C or a D. Like, you know, based off my expectations, 1 and 2 is kind of where I see them. I, I think I'm seeing some nice things out of some of the younger players. So, I got to give them an average just for that. Also, I thought it was Indiana Pacers. My bad. Um, yeah, Cleveland Cavaliers. Where are we at, man? Where is Cleveland? Is Cleveland just... I'm completely blind, guys. Oh, my... Oh, here we go. Cleveland Cavaliers is the biggest one out there. Yeah, I'm going to say a C just because, like, they're kind of meeting my expectations for the team um boston celtics two and one they lost the home opener to the 76ers and uh, they beat the toronto raptors and the new york knicks 
Uh, let's look at their players real quick here, man. So Kemba Walker, 22 points, four rebounds, three assists. Definitely has to get uh, evolved more like playmaking wise. And that's really the big issue with this team as right now. Like Marcus Smart, he's doing pretty good assist wise. Um, everybody's averaging like around two assists. Like I want that one guy to kind of take over and really just run the team. Because when you have like two assists, guys like that, to me, it shows there's a lot of um, isolation going on, things like that, man. Just like a lot of, you know, just ball hogish uh, style of play. I mean, yeah, you're going to get a few assists because you're going to pass eventually, but I don't know, man. I just want, like, Kevin Walker to really take the reins of this team and focus more on just scoring. Uh, but I will say probably like a B right now. I'll say a B for the Boston Celtics. They've been doing just fine. Uh, Los Angeles Clippers, 3-1. and one. Of course, they did lose to the Phoenix Suns, which is not great, man. <laughs> not great at all. Um, Kawhi Leonard's been great. You know, they don't have uh, Paul George out there yet, so you got to give them props to that. But I think just for that one L to the Phoenix Suns, you probably got to give them a B also. And uh, with the, they're very close to an A, man. They're very close to an A. I've not really had any big-time issues with them. It's just you can't lose games like that. You just you, you can't be looked at like a championship favorite and lose games like that, in my opinion. Uh, next, we got the Memphis Grizzlies, 1-2 and two on the season. They just beat the Brooklyn Nets, 134-133. John Morant looked great. Uh, he looks like he was definitely worth that second pick in the draft. And, yeah, we got Jaron Jackson doing his thing out there. And of course, John Morant's stats are not going to be updated for whatever reason. But, you know, uh, Jaron Jackson, you're looking at him, man, 17.7 rebounds. Uh, don't really want to look, to, uh, look at too much of the record when it comes to the Memphis Grizzlies because we all know they're not going to be great in that regard. Uh, but I will say, man, just like what I've seen from John Morant, I think it's worthy of, like, at least, like, like a C. I would say probably a C, man. Uh, I'd probably be good with that. Uh, next, we got the Atlanta Hawks 2-1 on the season, man. So, they ended up losing to the Philadelphia 76ers by two points. But I am giving this team an A, man. I am giving them an A just because I've been so impressed with this young basketball squad. Because not only has Trey Young been playing like the best point guard in the Eastern Conference. Well, Kyrie Irving too, of course, man. But yeah, um, you got Eastern Conference Player of the Week. But also just the rest of the team. Like Jabari Parker's looking great out there. Um, once again, it's not going to show the rookie says, you know, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, players like that. It's like these are NBA rookies and they're 2-1 in the NBA season, man. So, yeah, they are definitely uh, exceeding expectations. Uh, next, we have the Miami Heat. This is another team that I probably have to give an A to. They have really been impressing me out there, man. That's because Jimmy Butler's not even played yet. I don't think, the, uh, yeah, I don't think he played against the uh, Timberwolves. No, he did not. And, uh, yeah, let's go to the player stats again. Justice Winslow, he's looking like borderline all-star to me, man. Goran Dragic, I know he's had injuries the past few years, but he's picking up right where he left off. Bam Adebayo, uh, this guy could very well, like, he's only 22, man. Like, he literally could eventually maybe average a triple-double. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, he got to get five more assists to do so, but his all-around game has been absolutely amazing. And uh, he's definitely that candidate for most improved player, I would say, as a lot of people said, going into the season. So, yeah, they're playing great basketball. Charlotte Hornets, 1-3 uh, and three on the season. Devontae Graham, 18 points. Uh, he's played, like, a lot better than anybody thought Devontae Graham was going to play. Terry Rozier looks like probably a waste of the money. Like, I don't know. Man. I, don't, I don't know what happens with him. Uh, they did get the first one of the season uh, against Chicago Bulls. And then they got, we lost three games since that. Uh... I mean, it's the Charlotte Hornets, man. Like, I'm not impressed with them. I give them an F. Like, I'm not impressed. You know, Devontae Graham, good job to him. But, eh, not much to say about them. Utah Jazz, 3-1 and one on the season. So, yeah, they definitely got some nice wins. Uh, Donovan Mitchell playing amazing basketball. Bogdanovich, he was an absolute great fit. Already averaging 24 points per game. Rudy Gobert, you know, defensively. Like, see the shot blocks up because, of course, you know, uh, Rudy Gobert, one of the best, if not the best defensive player in the NBA. And you got Mike Conley, who's playing atrocious. Like, he has just completely, utterly forgotten how to play the game of basketball. I don't know exactly what's going on. He's shooting 20% on the year. Now, the fact that they're 3-1 and with Mike Conley playing like that actually does say a lot about the team. It shows that if he can't actually pick things up, um, that team's going to be extremely dangerous. Uh, I would say, as of right now, uh, let me find the Utah Jazz. You know, three one. Let me see who they who they end up losing to, man. They ended up losing to the Lakers. Beat OKC. Beat the Sacramento Kings. Beat the Phoenix Suns. Okay, yeah, I could probably gotta say a B for now. And the only reason uh, I got I can't give them that A is just because like the teams they have beat, not really too impressive. I know it's the Phoenix Suns, of course. The Phoenix Suns actually have been playing pretty good, but uh, you know it's still the Phoenix Suns. Uh, next up, we got the Sacramento Kings 0-4. This one is very easy, man. Based off my expectations of them, I am giving them an F. They were like my sleeper team for uh, sneaking into the playoffs. And right now, they just look like a whole bunch of dudes. And they just look young and inexperienced. And 
I don't know what it is, man. I know Marvin Bagley going down with injury doesn't help him. He's out for like four to six weeks. I don't know, man. They're not looking good. They're not looking good. I got to give them an F. Okay, next, we got the New York Knicks. One and three. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not like winning games. Nobody really expected that out of them. Uh, I, I would say as we, yeah, because RJ Barrett, I'm not going to be able to see his exact stats there, man. But I know he's playing really good basketball. I wish I, damn, I don't know why I can't see the stats. It's so stupid. Uh, it should be updated on here, man. But I do know, like, just the other game, uh, he had, like, 15 points and, like, 15 rebounds. Maybe I can actually look on here. Might actually show up on here. Maybe. Um, no, it doesn't. They don't even show up on here, man. This is 2K's freaking garbage, man. 2K's completely garbage. Uh, but no, regardless, like, I will say just because I feel bad about it, but I kind of wrote off RJ as, like, the guy that was going to be the bust of the 2019 NBA draft, and he's been anything but that. Um, you know, yeah, the one and three is not great. Nice win against the Bulls. But I think just off of RJ Barrett, kind of what he's doing out there. I'm kind of teetering between like a B and a C. I think one more win probably would have gave him V for me. I'm going to say probably a C for right now. But RJ Barrett is like, I don't know, man. I like his game. He's doing some good things. Uh, next up, we got the Los Angeles Lakers. They are 2-1. and one. They lost the home opener again. Well, it was at the Clippers home court, but it's pre it was pretty much a Lakers game too. Pretty much the Lakers home game too. 2-1. Uh, two and one. Uh, player stats, you got Anthony Davis, 25 points, 10 rebounds, LeBron James doing his thing out there, um, you know, being 2-1, on one, I like, I, I gotta see more out of this team, like, the win against Utah Jazz was good, Charlotte Hornets, that's like one you would kind of expect them to do, um, they haven't played like that dominant, dominant basketball that I was kind of expecting, like, Dwight Howard looked like he was a pretty nice pickup, of course, um, I'm going to say probably a C for right now. I just I want to see more from the Lakers. I think we will in due time. It's only the first week. I just I want to see a bit more out of them. I want to see LeBron James, you know, be a bit more assertive out there too. Uh, Orlando Magic, they are 1 and 2 on the year. Lost to uh well, they beat the Cleveland Cavaliers, lost to the Hawks and the uh Toronto Raptors. Evan 48, 19 points. Vucevic looking like he might have been a one and done all-star center. Uh Marco Fultz has actually been pretty nice out there. Um I don't see, yo, Aaron Gore, wow, he is not playing good basketball. Yeah, I would probably say that I've been pretty impressed with Markel Fultz, and just for that reason, I'll probably say a D. Got definitely a borderline F team, the way they've been kind of going out with things, but uh, Vucevic definitely has to step up, play better. Aaron Gordon, he's paying, being paid way too much money to average seven points per game early on. Uh, next up, we got the Dallas Mavericks. They are 2-1. and one. Luka Doncic actually looking like he could be the youngest MVP in NBA history. Chris Thomas Porzingis, so impressive. Like, how is a guy gonna come you know be gone for a year and a half two years and then come back and just start being that dominant right away extremely extremely impressive uh, i'm gonna say the dallas mavericks have been playing like an a team to me man definitely an a team brooklyn nets one and two one and two on the year i didn't actually i know they were one and two man <laughs> i thought that's actually not really good at all uh kyrie irving and this year is pretty much the Kyrie Irving show. Like, it's Kyrie Irving and everybody else. Karis LeVert, you know, still improving on what he can uh, be as an NBA player. But uh, Kyrie, I'm hearing this kind of some things out there with some drama with him. And um, I also heard something going on with him mentally, which is never a good thing, man. Like, mental health definitely needs more awareness out there. Uh, one and two, though. I hate to do it. I'm probably going to say a D, though, man. Like... I still expect this team to make the playoffs. And the fact that they're 1-2 with Kyrie averaging 38 points and 6 assists. I don't know, man. I don't know if it bodes well in, in like long-term of things. Uh, next, we got the Denver Nuggets. They are 3-0. and oh, This is without Michael Porter Jr. playing. Man. I'm about to give you all, all an F just for not playing Michael Porter Jr. Like, I want to see what this guy can do on the basketball court. And they're not playing him. But Jamal Murray doing good. Uh, Jokic, I know like early on in a few of these games he had some foul trouble. But he looks fine out there. Gary Harris, Will Barton, Jeremy Grant. Like, the thing about this team is that uh, they play, like, like just, like, chemistry-wise. They just are, like, such, like, a fine-tuned machine. And everybody kind of knows their role out there and does their part. Uh, I would probably say, man, you know, being 3-0. and And that's with Jokic just playing, like, he's playing great basketball. But he can be playing even better out there, and they're still 3-0. and So, uh, yeah, I'm going to say Denver Nuggets. A-team. Playing like an A-team. All right, who'd they actually beat? They beat uh, the Suns. Uh, ooh, Sacramento, Portland. Okay probably have to say a b i gotta see him i gotta see him beat a, B, uh, a bit more uh, better teams out there man i mean portland's good but yeah uh next up we got the Indiana pacers easy f they have played horrible man uh they lost two games to the detroit pistons which i'm all for lost to the cleveland cavaliers no excuses for that whatsoever malcolm brogdon's been playing pretty nice um sabonis looking great out there but that's the thing man it's like 
I, I, I think it's the same song and dance as what we've been saying for a while now. That's they need to trade either Miles Turner or Sabonis. I know Pacer fans don't want to do that because both these guys are obviously great basketball players, but there is so much as having too much of a good thing. Like, trade one of these amazing big guys, and you'll still have an amazing big guy left, but you'll be able to upgrade another position. I think it's probably going to happen. But Brogdon, look at this man. He's probably in the NBA in assists. 22 points, 11 assists per game. Uh, he's been a great fit. Like, I know the team's waiting for Old Depot to get back. But, yeah, Alden 3, probably no excuse for that right now. Uh, next, we got the New Orleans Pelicans. They are 0-4. So, you might think, yo, Christie's probably going to give them a uh, an F. Um, I wouldn't say that, man. Ingram, it's about damn time. Brandon Ingram. Finally playing like a damn all-star superstar coward play. He's been absolutely amazing. And um, honestly, just because of Brandon Ingram and a few more other factors, uh, like injuries, of course, to Zion, Drew Holiday. And I'm pretty sure they've lost like a lot of close games. They had like 11-point game right there, 8-point game. You know, what, 7-point game, 3-point game. Um, I'm probably going to say a C, actually. I like what I'm seeing out of the young guys. And once Drew Holiday's healthy, once Zion's healthy... Um, I think a lot of those close games is going to turn to W's very quickly, man. Pelican is playing good. Uh, Detroit Pistons, 2-2 two and two on the season. So, I obviously got, can't be biased with them, man, um, because it's my team. So, it would be very easy to, but uh, Derrick Rose, you know, his per 36 stats. Let me pull those up real quick if I can do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know a good way to do that, man. But here we go, here we go, here we go. One sec, one sec. Yo, this game is so damn laggy, guys. Uh, per 36, 30.7 assists, which is better than his damn MVP season. He's playing great. Andre Drummond's playing like an all-star to me. Luke Kennard, I said most improved player. Or not a candidate for it, at least. He's definitely playing like that. Um, thing is, though, is that their two wins is against the Pacers, who obviously have not won any games yet. Uh, lost to the 76ers. Lost to the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, I'll probably say for now, probably like a C. Like, I'm happy with their 2-2. Two two, but, you know... I still think at this point they could go either way. Like, I'm not like, oh my god, this team's gonna win so many games, or this game's team's gonna like lose so many games. They're kind of teetering around that average space that they've been at for such a long time now. Uh Toronto Raptors, three and one. So their only loss was to the Boston Celtics. Um, have not really beaten any like great teams yet. So that is something to, to uh consider. Pascal Siakam does look like he's just like, okay, I want to be the number one option. I, I, I got to give him props, man. I wasn't really, like, believing him all that much that he could be that number one guy out there. But he's definitely proven me wrong. Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet's playing great. Um, I'll probably say a B. Like, I don't want to give him an A just because I got to see him beat some more talent. I think a B feels about right. But no, man, they're, they're doing good. Like, they're looking like they're going to be a top team in the uh, Eastern Conference, man. That's with Stanley Johnson even getting playing time, man. So, you know, you get an F just for that, just for playing that, man. Next up, Houston Rockets, 2-1. and one. So, they just beat the OKC Thunder. Uh, beat the Pelicans by three points. Lost to the Milwaukee Bucks. But, of course, the big thing here is the chemistry of James Harden and uh, Russell Westbrook. So, Russell, I think, is playing great. Uh, James Harden, this is crazy, man. Averaging 29 points per game. Shooting 28% field goal percentage. Shooting 15% from three. So, I think just the fact of the matter that they're 2-1 and one, despite that. It's like, as soon as James Harden... Can get his shooting uh, percentages up. This man might average 40 this season, guys. But no, uh, just for that reason, just because like some of his struggles, it's like, yes, the team is still winning games out there. But uh, I'll probably say I got to give him a B just because my expectations was that Tim and Russell were going to struggle early on. And while James Harden is struggling, he's still finding a way to put up numbers. So I could give him a B, I think, just for that reason. Okay, next up, San Antonio Spurs. 3-0, and oh, man. So they beat Portland, uh, beat the New York Knicks, beat the Washington Wizards. Uh, player stats on the season and DeRose and Marcus Aldridge looking great out there. Um, I don't really think they beat any like extremely talented teams outside of the Portland Trailblazers, so that's another thing to consider. Um, you know, I, I did think this was going to be the year they were going to kind of fall off a bit, but it looks like they are proving me wrong on that end of things. So, another B. I think they're playing better than average, but they're not playing like A basketball quite either. Uh, next we got the Phoenix Suns. Okay, okay, okay. This one's an interesting one right here, man. They only lost by one to the damn Utah Jazz. Damn, this team could very well be 4-0, man. This team could wear, uh, very well be 4-0. And the fact is, the IQ of this team, for such a young team, has been so damn impressive, man. I watched a video about it on my second channel, Extra Crispy. And, uh, yeah, there's this team's just playing smart basketball. And I have no choice but to give them an A. And that's with losing DeAndre Ayton. Suspension, man. He's out for 25 games. And they're still managing to play good basketball. That is like unheard of from an extremely young team like this. Good for them, man. Very happy for that team. Uh, next, we got the OKC Thunder. They are 1-3. and three. 
course, they had that big win against the uh, the Golden State Warriors, which was like we were all saying the Golden State Warriors are just gonna be nothing ever again now. Which you know maybe a little, maybe a little premature on that, but Shea's playing good. Uh, Chris Paul's not playing good, man. I don't think Chris Paul's playing very good at all. He's playing kind of like like a basic bitch ass point guard at this point, man. Uh, Gallinari's fine. Dennis Schroeder's playing decent out there. Steven Adams, uh, he's got a career high in rebounding. So, well, yeah, Russell's no longer on the team. Uh, but no, man, you know, Golden State win was nice. Gotta say a D, though. I gotta say a D. Sorry, guys. Sorry, man. All right. Next, we got the Timberwolves. 3 and 0. Oh. Never knew we would be here. Never knew we would be here with this team. Carl Anthony Towns playing like the best center of the NBA, playing like an MVP. Andrew Wiggins playing like a new motivated man out there. Jeff Teague's doing good enough. Uh, and it's really just like like the rest of the team. Like everybody on this team is like just doing their part. Um, they're an A team, man. Undefeated. Cat playing great. Like good for them. I hope they keep it up. I definitely hope they keep it up because a lot of people thought this team was gonna fall off. Uh, Trailblazers two and two. So beat Dallas by two. Beat Sacramento by uh, ten. Lost to uh, the Spurs, and they lost to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, let's go to the player stats again. So, Damon CJ doing their thing out there. Hassan Whiteside, he's playing good basketball to me, man. I mean, 13 points, 12 rebounds, one block. Like, what more could you ask for the guy that a lot of people thought was going to fall off? But, um, regardless, I haven't really seen enough from this team. I'm going to say probably a C for right now. Uh, next, we got the Golden State Warriors, 1 and 2. So, Steph Curry, 24 points, 7 assists. D'Lo at 17 and 6. Fact of the matter, Draymond Green said it himself, man. Draymond Green said this team play, playing sucky, man. They're playing sucky. So, their only W was against the Pelicans. Lost to OKC bad. Lost to the Clippers pretty damn bad. Um, I think based off expectations, you got to give them an F. I'm sorry to say. You got to give them an F. And finally, we got the Washington Wizards. I don't got much to say about the Washington Wizards here, guys. I really don't, man. So, yeah, Isaiah Thomas, damn, Everton, 16 points, 5 assists. Good for him. Bradley Beal at 20 and 8. 1 and 2. And it's like a D. It's like a D. Um, but, yeah, that's all we got. So, hopefully, you guys were able to see most of the stats until I was kind of talking out loud and stuff. So, let me actually um, put this a little bigger right there. There we go, man. That is my ranking one week into the season. Don't get too offended by it, man. It's so damn early on in the year. So many things can change. But, uh, no, this is actually a lot of fun. So, I would definitely consider doing this, um, you know, maybe like once a week or once a month. Probably once a month, I would think, is probably the better feel for it. But, regardless, hope you guys all enjoyed. Be sure to drop that like. Give me your thoughts, comments, and concerns in the uh, comment section below. And peace out, my friends.